Hey everyone, my name is Ryan from Interview Kickstart and today we're going to be going through a sample data modeling question. So before we begin the agenda, uh, we're going to be going through a design question uh, to create a data model for a library information system. Uh, we'll go through getting requirements, breaking them down, and using uh, the parsed out requirements to come up with what we're going to be implementing in an ERD and schema. Uh, we're also going to recap some general concepts on DDL and constraints. And we'll also go through some SQL questions where one, we're going to be seeing the DDL, uh, if we had to write the DDL for the library data model that we're going to be creating. And two, we're going to go through some sample questions, um, about the, uh, use of the schema we come up with to answer certain questions about our system. And with that, we're going to get to our question. So. Here we have a prompt. Uh, you can pause it if you need more time to read through it. But so the prompt says, design a relational database for a library information system, create an ERD and schema, DDL for our design. Um, the ERD should contain one many-to-many -many relationship. Um, then below it has two additional SQL questions to answer um, uh, uh, from our design. So at first glance, uh, it kind of seems like we don't really have requirements on what we need to implement in our ERD and schema. Um, but what happens is you, so this is one of those questions where I would say, if you look at the SQL questions, really paying attention to those is what's going to actually help you decide what are the tables, entities, and columns that I'm going to need to keep track of. So basically, as we go through entering the questions, we should be referring back to the SQL questions, uh, to sort of tell, remind ourselves that like whatever design we come up with, it should be able to answer those SQL questions. So, um, breaking that down is actually what's going to tell you and give you requirements and tell you what you need to be tracking in your system. So the way I would approach it is basically first, uh, I would kind of start breaking it down from what we just have, uh, in the initial prompt, right? So I mean, if I get. A pen. So if we start to kind of break it down, so we first have um, pretty generic information, right? We need an ERD, scheme and DDL, pretty self-explanatory, one many-to-many -many relationship. Okay. Um, most likely we're going to have multiple, but it's just that required that in our solution, we're going to need one. Okay. So that's pretty high level, but if we sort of get into breaking down the actual SQL questions, that's where we sort of get interesting, uh, get some interesting details on what we actually need to implement in in our solution right so it says we're going to be we're going to want to track how many copies of the book so now it's getting interesting because it's telling me okay so in my system i'm going to be kept tracking books um i'm going to be tracking multiple copies of a book so it sounds like there's going to be a book then the library can likely have multiple copies so i'm going to need entities to track that uh, so we want to track how many are currently in the library and how many of them are checked out Again, this is giving us details about how our system is going to function. So it looks like there's multiple copies of a book. Um, we're also, and we want to track, um, as people borrow them and as people return them, right? So we're going to be tracking how many, let's say if there, maybe there's 10, 10 copies total. So we want to see if there's six that are checked out and four that are available. Um, so we're going to want to keep track of that. We're also likely going to be keeping track of those transactions that happen to check those six out, most likely when they were checked out and so on, right? Um, find the books that have been checked out the most. So yeah, so kind of like we thought before, uh, the transactions, I'm going to be tracking how many times a certain book has been checked out and their associated users, right? So, okay, so like who's checking out books? So that tells me I probably, I'm probably going to be keeping track of members and people who are actually checking out these books. Okay, so as you can see, if you look into the actual question, we're getting our requirements for what our design is going to be like from the SQL questions. So again, our requirements haven't been given directly to us, but we're sort of teasing it out uh, from the information we've been given. So, okay. So now we got kind of like after breaking it down initially, I'd sort of review and look at what, what we have so far, right? So we know that our goal is to, to design an ERD schema and DDL for the prompt that I've been given, right? Um, and it's for a library system and it has one many to many relationship and it accomplishes, it accomplishes a couple of things. So, and then all these points we've sort of gotten from the, uh, the way we broke down the SQL question. So the library can contain multiple copies of the same book. That's from that first SQL question, um, tracks which copies are checked out and which aren't. Okay. That makes sense. Cause we were going to keep track of how many are in 
available for checkout and not. Um, historical record of how many times a book has been checked out. Again, we're keeping track of who's tracking, who's checking books out, um, how many times it's been returned. So because we want to, it's that cycle, second SQL question where we want to track, uh, how many have been checked out the most. Uh, and then we have members and there's, they're the people who are checking out the books. And that's what we want to be able to, uh, we want to keep track of that data point too. Okay. So. We basically have an initial set of requirements, but one thing to remember is again, uh, when you're in an actual interview situation, uh, most likely the interviewer is going to leave some key detail out. Um, there's going to be some ambiguity because what they want, they're expecting you to do is sort of ask them questions, um, and have a conversation to really tease out, um, uh, how they want you to implement the system. So there's going to be details to leave out. Again, this is basically because they want to see when you're on the actual job, how are you going to be talking to stakeholders to gather requirements and how are you going to uh, take their thoughts and um, change that into technical client, technical requirements for when you do these types of uh, database designs or data modeling um, tasks at work. So, okay. So again, you'd want to ask uh, clarifying questions. And the thing is, um, when you do ask those clarifying questions, what they also, what they would also want to see, um, particularly from more senior candidates is that you're able to add some real world context into the question. So you can see that it's, that, so you want to show that you understand it's not just a technical exercise, but, um, you're getting, you're able to see how it applies into the real world. So that might involve adding some complexity. Um, so you want to basically show that you're able to incorporate best practices and understand what the business objective is, not just this is a data modeling exercise that I'm doing for the sake of uh, data modeling, right? So, okay. So like, let's assume that we had that scenario where we talked uh, through requirements with the interviewer, and then we have some additional requirements that they want us to track. Um, that again, um, brings in some real world, con real world context to our application. So let's say in addition to books, the library also has periodicals. So magazines with multiple issues. Okay. So similar design as uh, how we had books, multiple copies of a book, multiple copies of a magazine makes sense in the real world. Uh, libraries can have multiple types of things that are available for checkout, right? Uh, library also tracks authors and publishers. Okay. So maybe they're keeping track of how many authors have published, how many books and, and so on. Uh, okay. Now we're getting into a bit more details about members. So library memberships are given to members and there's different membership tiers. Okay. So maybe some memberships are paid, some are free. Makes sense. The library would likely have that. Uh, each tier has a different max number of books that can be checked out and late fees. Okay. So that makes sense that if there's different membership tiers, there's different rules that apply with them. So some maybe have more late days. Maybe if there's free memberships that has a lower leniency period and so on. Uh, we also track employees with their own membership tier and different rules. Okay. That makes sense. Um, if the library has people working with them, uh, they're going to track their memberships and uh, have them as employees. And the last point here, they also track the late fee penalties that members incur. Makes sense because if we're checking, uh, if we're tracking those transactions, the library also likely wants to track um, how many books are outstanding, how much late fees they might have collected throughout the year, how many, how much is outstanding and so on. Okay. So from here, it seems like we have, uh, yeah, so it seems like there we have like a better picture of what we want to um, uh, solve for. And so you see here, the top here, this is basically our initial set of requirements. And then here, this was the additional context we got from talking to the interviewer. So what I would do is be at this point, now I have my requirements. And from here, you can actually really tease out uh, what are my entities, tables, and so on. So I would go right into basically breaking down, breaking those down as we kind of go, right? So from the, I can see, I can start to identify what the attributes and entities are. So most likely in an interview, you've kept track uh, on a notepad or on the whiteboard. So you're basically going to be going through that and scribbling down uh, what you're going to be doing in your design before you start whiteboarding. So in our case, as we go, okay, so it says library can contain multiple copies of the same book. Okay, so those are likely two different entities where I have a book entity and then there's some other entity that's going to track instances of a book, basically. Uh, tracks what's checked out. Okay, that's probably something that has to do with transactions that's occurring as time goes on, right? 
uh, historical record of how many times a book's been checked out. Again, same thing, most likely with the transactions, uh, members who are checking out books. Okay, there's probably a memberships entity um, that also joins to that transaction table. Um, and okay, so like, as you see, like now I'm sort of starting to put together, okay, here's this entity, it's going to join to the transaction entity. And like, now I'm sort of starting to form a picture in my head. Um, but yeah, like we're going to go down and break through every break down everything, right? So, uh, we keep going. There's the periodicals with multiple issues, likely the same design as the book. Um, a library keeps track of authors and publishers. Okay. So it looks like those are, uh, sort of like, mm, we can call them like dimension entities where, um, that's probably going to join to a book or a periodical. And so I can see how many times, uh, they've published something or written something. Uh, memberships are given to tier membership. Memberships are given to members and there's different membership tiers. Uh, again, this is probably a dimension thing that joins to some membership or rather member or a user entity, how, depending on how I actually want to implement it. Um, and that's this membership tier entities where I'm going to get those, uh, rules that we mentioned before, like max number of books, um, late fees and so on. Um, uh, keep going. Uh, we likely have a entity for employees that also ha joins to that membership tier dimension, uh, and the late fee penalties. Okay. And again, that's probably with the membership tier dimension, because if we remember from the requirements, the different tiers will have different rules and penalties. Okay. So I've sort of broken down my requirements. Um, and I, I sort of have an idea and you saw as I did that, I sort of had, I was forming the picture in my mind of what the um, joins and what the entities are going to be and what it's going to look like. So now I'm basically ready to step into the data modeling solution. Um, and again, we're in for this example, we're going to go through all three steps, conceptual, logical, and then physical modeling.